Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I am here looking at a Citroen C4 or a DS4. So this vehicle is a crank, no start. Okay, I have been looking at this car before I made a video and I did manage to get it started with some easy start spray. Uh, I'm not sure if it will restart now again. Well, let's see. No, so it just cranks over. Um, I can get it to start on easy start, but it is running very rough, misfiring all over the place and knocking. But uh, it's not a bad knock, it sounds like a diesel knock. So if we get back out the scan tool here, using the launch Eurotab 3. Uh, okay, we need to turn the ignition on. Let's try that again. So we have additive. Now he was told by the AA that it's uh, a problem with the DPF. So, but I'm not sure why they've said that. There's a short circuit to the fuel rail pressure sensor. Um, airflow measure. Now I did have that off. Uh, additive level again. So that's the Eli's Eli's tank. Um, so we're going to have a look at the fuel rail pressure sensor. Okay. Now I did go and get one of them. I've picked one up already. Now these are not, I know it's not going to be the easiest uh, one to change because the fuel rail is down the back at the center of the engine, which means I'm going to have to remove the battery, these inlet pipes, the air filter housing, um, and possibly other stuff. But we'll get down there once we get to it. I haven't changed one of these in, oh, it must be four years ago. Um, even though they are very common, I haven't really changed one in a long time. Okay, so I'm going to just remove this. I've already removed that little plastic cover there from the top. Uh, I think to remove this without any stress, I'm going to have to unplug that and disconnect this cable here so we can split them apart. So I've got that bolt out, which has separated that at least. It hasn't separated this bit, but that will be separated from here. So now we can just move that to the side there. And we should be able to get this case out with a bit of wiggling. Take off the terminal there. Let's fill down. Out. I can remove this 10mm clamp here. Now we can remove these 30mm bolt pair on the uh, battery plate there. I'm going to get those loose now. Take that out. Okay so we've got that loose. Um, bolts there, a couple of bolts over there. Now there is a bolt just in there and it looks like the other side of it is under the wheel arch which is a bit of a pain in the arse. But uh, we may not need to even get that off. So what I'll continue doing now is just taking out this uh, air filter housing here. So disconnect that little pipe there. Disconnect the airflow meter. Pull out the engine cover there. We'll remove these 13 mil bolts here. So I've opened those three T25 bolts there on the filter top. And then we're going to open these T20s here for the brake reservoir. So we'll pull off the top. And with a bit of wiggling, we'll get that out too. Okay, what I've done here is I've used a pick to unplug the sensor. Just see if I can get that, if I can get that wire out now. There. So what I've done is, you see that's plugged onto the rail, basically like that, and I've just put the pick in behind it, uh, just like, like that. Grabbed a little tab and pulled the plug out. Now the sensor is the right way, I, I mean the right way to do this looks like it would obviously be 
to remove the water pump and or maybe the EGR valve. Um, I didn't go with removing that. It is a flexible kind of plate, so I've just bent it up a little bit and it will it will bend back down into place. Um, just trying to save the customer money on wasted labour, really, um, which he's agreed to. Um, this, the rail is just about there. Now, it is impossible to see it because you can't... The farthest I can get my head in is here. Otherwise, I'm hitting the bulkhead, so I can't see. I can put my hand around there. You can't get in, but you can get your hand down there. You literally can't physically see it, but you can... Well, you can't really feel it unless you've got really fiddly hands and you can get your hand completely in there and you can get it. Now, I've used a very deep 27mm socket there on a wobbly to get in there and get that. I've got it out without dismantling anything. I've done that job a few times now. This vehicle is probably a little bit more difficult than others um, that have got the same. I can think of a lot easier cars to get this sensor out on. For instance, like a, a Volvo V60 or something with, with this engine. There's a lot more room and access down the back. But there we are, we got it out. Now, it's probably taken me, I don't know how long I've been here, half hour. But uh, I'll be honest, it is fiddly. Um, now it's up to you if you want to do it this way. I know you would have less of a, you know, it'll play less on your head if you could remove all of the parts, but I really don't want to remove that and lose all of his coolant. And then when you remove stuff like this, you know, you're probably, you're probably going to find that either when it comes off the, the, the gasket, then there's no, is no more good on the, on the thermostat housing there. So I'd rather just do it this way. Now, I've got my fingers in there. I'm not going to lie, it is really, really tight to get in there. Um, but I've managed to figure out a way to bend my hand in there and get that tightened down. So I've just got my hand in in this sort of position here. Now, managed to get that socket back on there with that little swivel bar there and we've managed to tighten that down so that's the plug in uh, I better mention so when you when you screw this in it ends up facing this way up so that means when you're putting the plug in you need to face the part with the clip goes under under there so the face when you're putting the the plug in that's going to be sitting like that so you make sure you want to get the bit that's got a clip on it that goes facing down so you can push it in okay so that's all of the car back together now we're back inside yes we are started up okay we're still going to have the service uh, message down there and the particle light and the engine management light because of that DPF we've got that warning over here for it so we're just clearing all of the fault codes and we'll come back from here sorry the screen keeps going out of focus uh, what else was I doing that's it so yeah we've cleared the codes on that and we will possibly come back to do the DPF. Uh, customer says it's a little bit too ex expensive at the moment for that. So we'll just cycle the key again. Start it up. So it looks like the DPF warning has gone. Oh no, it's not here, it's back. So I said the car is all running nicely now. And uh, we'll get it booked back in for the DPF if need be. But uh, yeah, that's it. See you on our next video.